All right, Shalom, Shalom, Mr. Brother Zachariah, coming back to you with another uh, lesson, okay? It's a late one, <laughs> but, uh, you know, hey, it don't matter the time, the, the day, the hour, whatever, you know, we're going to come out, we're going to, you know, do this work, all right? So uh, before I get started, I want to give all honor, all glory, and all praise unto Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Rekakwadash, double honors to the elders of the nation of Israel. Shalom to you brothers out there that are laboring, enduring the elements, making your body a living sacrifice, trying to seal the elect, making your call election assure, seeking out your own salvation, as well as you sisters that are learning, listening, applying, being obedient to your husbands. Shalom, shalom. Again, it's the brother Zachariah coming back to you with another lesson and little willingness be edifying. OK, and uh, what inspired me to do this lesson, you know, I just I did some art, you know, kind of showing like how was shy? Uh, you know who the world calls Jesus Christ, you know, his name is Yahweh Shai, okay, and he is a, a dark-skinned man, okay, with white woolly hair and a beard, as you see in this picture here, but uh, when he comes back, he's going to be doing a lot of killing, okay, and uh, it's going to be a, a, a bloodbath, a massacre, you know, which I played uh, this, a song on here, which I'm not going to play it out loud, you know, but as you're just looking at the images as I'm scrolling through, you know, um, it's a group called uh, Dayton Family. I, I used to listen to them back in the day. You know, it's, this was a group back in like the 90s and stuff like that. But, um, you know, which is not a, it's not a, probably, a, I would say it's not a good song or whatever for like, you know, you come into this truth and, you know, I, I kind of stopped listening to a lot of rap. However, I like the intro of how it came in and it just kind of really fit with these pictures, you know, showing all the blood and stuff because it's a bloodbath. Look at that, you know. But uh, I want to get into a lesson because people will look at this, you know, and they're seeing what we're posting. And they're like, hold on, wait a minute. You got the Bible and they're talking about all this blood and gore and stuff, which is not all about blood and guts and gore and stuff. However, but the, the Bible's pretty graphic about these things. But your pastor never bring these things out. OK, so we're going to dive into these scriptures in this lesson. And look like again, Lord willing, you be edified because, you know, there's new people that tune into your uh, YouTube you know, they're maybe trying to see what's going on. They might have been intrigued by the art. But what we are doing, we are waking our people up. We are uh, just like we've been awakened. OK, the Heavenly Father has is, is poured his spirit out upon all flesh. OK, on the earth. So even if you're not an Israelite, you got people that are whistleblowers and things. They're exposing stuff. However, the Bible is written about the Israelites. You so-called Negroes, Hispanics and Native Americans. OK, going back to your forefather, Jacob. OK, which his name later was changed to Israel, which in the Paleo Hebrew, it means Yah is Yasharallah. All right. So when you see those things being posted and stuff like that, you know, it's because we're waking up. We're coming back to our language. We're coming back to our culture, which our culture is in the Bible. All right. And you got certain men that, uh, you know, the Heavenly Father has has gave them the knowledge, wisdom and understanding to break these scriptures down the right way and the correct way. OK, so that we can edify our people and they get an understanding. OK, to knowing who we are, knowing uh, who the Heavenly Father is, who his son is, the holy angels, uh, our homeland our ways, our culture, our enemies, knowing who our enemies are, our laws, statutes, and commandments, you know, the, the very thing that we broke that, that led to our, our demise, all right? And we're coming back to that, all right? So, it's you know, it's beautiful times, okay? Scary times, but beautiful times. Beautiful times because we're waking up knowing who we are. We're coming back to our power, which is Yahweh through his son, Yahweh Shai, all right? You know, it's a beautiful thing. OK, but the scary thing is that our enemies are seeing us waking up and they're plotting against us on a daily. OK. All right. But like I said, you know, just scrolling through these images and just showing, you know, showing this stuff. You know, like I said, people will look at this and see it and, and be like, hold on, wait a minute. Is this is this biblical. You know what I'm saying? And absolutely it is. OK, so we're going to go ahead and uh, start diving into some of these scriptures. All right. So I could break it down a little bit to you. OK, and this is uh, we're going to start with the book of Psalms uh, 140 verse four. And look, 144, you see the 144 in there. <laughs> Call all which that means all praise to the heavenly father through his son. Yahweh Shai. That's pretty much what that's uh, saying. OK, like I said, we're learning our language, OK, which is the Paleo Hebrew. OK, but this is Psalms 140 and verse four. And it says, keep me, O Lord, from the hand of the wicked. Okay, when you go into the book of Job, Job, um, 
uh, what is it? Job 924. Okay. Uh, it talks about the earth has been given into the hands of the wicked. Okay. The wicked will be ruling in these last days. It's no, it's no secret who the wicked are. Just look at who, who were the uh, same race of people that had you, had you in slavery, still have you in slavery to this day. You just don't realize it. They just took the chains off of you. Okay. Let you, you let you roam around free, but you're really not free. Okay. You know, if we all decided to just band together and go uh, live on a continent somewhere else, they're going to say, hey, where you think you going? OK, you know, when we band together and we try to we had the Black Wall Street, what happened? They got mad and they bombed it. You know, they don't want you to be self-sufficient. You know, they want you solely depending on them, but they have a perpetual hatred, too. OK, which we're going to get into that but again. It says, keep me, O Lord, from the hand of the wicked, you know, because this is King David speaking. All right. This is what Psalms, you know, King David. All right. It says, preserve me from the violent man who have purpose to overthrow my goings. OK. And when you go back to the humble beginnings of Genesis, Jacob and Esau, because see, Esau will be ruling in the end times as second Ezra chapter six, verse nine. OK. For Esau is the end of the world. Okay, and Jacob, which is the Israelites, okay, you so called Negroes, Hispanics, and Native Americans, you are the most oppressed people on the earth. Okay, you're on reservations, these ghettos that we're in, the hoods, those are reservations too. Okay, all right, you're on reservations. And even if you're an Israelite and you might have a little bit, a little bit of money and you might live in a nice neighborhood or something, ultimately, it's really not a nice neighborhood because when you look at the how Babylon is right now, some of these nice neighborhoods, there's all types of junkies, meth heads, uh, these Edomites are, are crazy. You know, there's a lot of drama happening even in those so-called nice neighborhoods, gated communities as some of the most dysfunctional people. Okay. I had friends and stuff, you know, before the truth, you know, I had friends that were out there and Yahweh Bashim Yahweh allowed me to see that and see the dysfunction in, in, in those type of neighborhoods. And it's like, whoa, you know what I'm saying? Because you think you go there and, and you think you safe, you good. And those are some of the worst places. OK. A lot of dysfunction, um, you know, uh, there's a lot of uh, drug stuff happening and everything. All right. So it, no matter where you go, but like I said, the Israelites, for the most part, we're in uh, reservations, we're in ghettos, we're in the hoods, all right? You know, we're, the, we're oppressed people, okay? But that's all about the curses, okay? We didn't keep that covenant, our forefathers, okay? And we're still suffering from it till this day, okay? All right, but you got a remnant elect, okay, that are waking up and coming back to the Heavenly Father, and he's going to preserve and keep you, okay? And Lord willing, we be of that number. This is why we do the work. We do the, you know, I'm using the ark now as part of the ministry, okay? Before that, it was just straight up current events, you know, which I still do all those things. I haven't stopped, you know, I continue doing the work daily, you know, because we're called to go out on the highways and hedges. These are things that we're doing to show the Heavenly Father that, hey, you know, we appreciate you waking us up. That's our showing our appreciation by doing this work. And Lord willing, you know, uh, it's not done in vain, you know, and we we be called and we be delivered. OK, that's what doing the work is, but also working on yourself as well. That inner man, you got to work on, on, on yourself, man. OK, so that you can be delivered. OK. But yeah, again, it says, keep me, O Lord, from the hand of the wicked. OK, which we know it to be Esau. All right. The Edomites, the uh, so-called uh, Caucasian. OK. They are the wicked. All right. It says, keep me, O Lord, from the hand of the wicked. Preserve me from the violent man who have per who had uh, who have purpose to overthrow my goings. All right. And they have done that. OK, this this land here, you know, starting with the Native Americans, which I believe through the spirit, those are my people. OK, when I look at my dad, you know, my dad is the history and going into it, man, man, we were already here. You know, my people's man. OK, so, you know, that really it really strikes a nerve even more. You know, e even if I wasn't, it was like, damn, you know, what I'm saying I'm still mad because at the end of the day, all of us, my people's, you know. We're just, we all uh, may be different tribes, but we all stem back to this, our same forefather, okay, which is Jacob, all right? And we all were oppressed together, all right? But this land, starting with the natives, our blood is saturated all throughout this place, 
okay? Without no question, all right? This is Numbers 35 and 33. It says, so ye shall not pollute the land wherein ye are, okay? The Edomites came here and they began to pollute it with our blood, shedding the blood of our people. You know, Christopher uh, Columbus with his conquistadors, okay? Uh, out there in the uh, uh, West Indies, you know, uh, with all the uh, Boricua Tainos, you know, they was pretty much uh, just slaying them with swords, man. Testing the, the, the sharpness of their blades, okay? By by slaying um, our people, man, okay? The Tainos, which we know uh, them to be, you know, uh, a lot of your, uh, you know, Ephraim, Simeon, uh, Manasseh, okay? And some of them might be scattered on some of the uh, uh, other islands as well. Some of your, uh, what is it, the, the Lesser Antilles and stuff like that. You don't hear a lot of the, the names mentioned, okay? But you got Antigua, all right, Dominica, Okay, those are some of the other islands. They got, you know, it's a lot of islands out there, you know. And then, you know, uh, the southern kingdoms out there as well. You got Levi, you got Benjamin. There might be some remnants of Judah, you know, on some of the islands as well. But we know a lot of them also are here in the Americas. All right. But, uh, man, you know, the, our, our blood, man, has been shed, okay? All the tribes, okay? So, again, it says, So ye shall not pollute the land wherein ye are, for blood it defileth the land, okay? And the land cannot be cleansed of the blood that is shed therein, but by the blood of him that sheddeth. Okay, so those that shed that blood, those those starting with those Spaniards, those uh, which they are Edomites too, by the way. They're just Spanish-speaking Edomites. All right, but you know the French, all of them, the British, any of all of them that came over here and did what they did, those same uh, people. Okay, or their blood has to be shed. Okay just to make that right you know just to make that right and that's what's gonna happen okay some of it's already it's already happened before your very eyes but it's gonna happen in mass numbers it's gonna happen like like you know it's just gonna you know bug a lot of people out but it's not gonna bug out the righteous it's not gonna bug out the elect you know the people that, that are seeking out Yahweh Bashim Shai, you know those Israelites okay it's not gonna bug them out they understand that this must take place. Okay, it's clearly telling you here in the book of Numbers. All right. So I just want to show you some examples because one of the things, like I said, you go back to Genesis, you know, Esau was blessed with the sword. Okay. Because see, he felt like he was beguiled by his brother Jacob because Jacob went in, in, in place of him and got that, uh, that blessing from um, their father Isaac. Okay. He went in there. Uh, and uh, dressed himself because you know Isaac was was in his old age and he was beginning to go blind, so he really couldn't see. And you know he went in there dressed as him. But the prophecy was already even before they were born. The prophecy was told unto um, them that uh, the uh, elder was going to serve the younger. Okay, so Esau came out first. That's why you got to read the Bible and, and everything is in there. You just got to connect the dots. This is why it's very important to read. Okay. But like I said, we will teach and we will bring it out to edify our people. But, you know, uh, Esau was born first. He came out first and in the Bible, it described him. OK, but it never described Jacob because Jacob looked like everybody else around him. Everybody were melanated people. Esau came out red, which means he, basically his blood was show forth through his skin. OK, you know, they say he was red all over. All right. And you notice, like, when you look at a lot of your Edomites, their blood shows forth through the skin. That's why they have a term like rednecks and things like that. You know, and we're just bringing it out, man. Hey, it's the truth, okay? Which, we, uh, Lord willing, I might be going into a lesson tomorrow about uh, leprosy. Because somebody was, was uh, saw a post I made showing uh, about going into Cain, all right? All right, which we, we believe through the Spirit. You know, hey, that's, um, uh, Esau is actually... Uh, Cain back in the regeneration Okay, you know these Edomites they have the spirit of Cain on them Okay, this is why they, they, they love blood, but look at this. We want to show you these images See that you know because Cain slay his brother Abel All right, and Esau Esau did that with with um, you know uh, You know Esau's people, you know his descendants did it through you know uh, Jacob all right Cause he said he was gonna slay Jacob, all right. But you see this? Look at that. See that? Okay. 
gotta show you all this okay and these are the so-called negroes okay some of them could be uh uh could be some of your gad okay there's make make no mistake I, uh, they was doing this uh to the north american indians too okay and look just showing you like showing you mexican but the hispanics you know they was uh I, i'm pretty sure they was doing it to some of the other tribes as well so a lot of it they they won't uh publicly bring it out and mention it but some some things are being revealed just showing you see they was doing stuff to them as well these are the these are all these are the tribes okay because you got people trying to say that they're not israelites okay hey the curses hey the curses will be on you man you know all right can't escape can't escape them curses all right, but that we don't need to band together and oh let's let's get arm bear arms and let's go take them out. Let's get revenge. Nah, man, we ain't gotta do all that. Hey, the heavenly Father uh, is gonna fight fight for us, okay? Because the Bible tells you how to conduct yourself. It says, if it be so, be at peace with all men, okay? Now there's certain times you might have to defend yourself. Hey, make no mistake. Like for example, if we're out there on the highways and we're teaching, we're men of peace. Okay, but if somebody come up on, on the highways while you're trying to teach and they all in your face and they slap you or something, no, you, what you going to do to stand there and, and take it? No, you're going to defend yourself. Somebody put their hands on you. Okay, but for the most part, we're men of peace. We don't go out and excite. We don't incite violence and stuff like that or promote it, you know. Okay, but now we we, we uh, speak out what the scriptures, is, uh, you know, prophecies and things that are going to happen. Okay, but we don't go out there and just do stuff. No. All right. This is Exodus 14 and 14. And look, you can see the 144 in there again. <laughs> Beautiful. All right. But it says the Lord, Yahweh shall fight for you and, and ye shall hold your peace. You see that? So we uh, we hold our peace. Yeah, we understand uh, what happened to, to us. Okay. Do we feel some kind of way? Absolutely. Okay. Did we deserve it? Absolutely. Yes, we deserved it because we... We, we transgress against the Heavenly Father, okay? You know? And you might say, you know, uh, we just broke a few commandments or something. Man, you better go and read and look at the history. And, 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 and a lot of things that we've done is probably not even recorded, you know, in the scriptures. Man, any type of wickedness you can think of, we was probably more than likely doing it, man. And we pissed off the Heavenly Father, okay? Because, hey, as much as he's a God of mercy, he's a God of wrath, too. He don't play. OK. So we deserved every bit of it. All right. But we're in a time of, of mercy. OK. Heavenly Father showing mercy on us, man. But we got to come back to him. OK. Because he's, he's definitely going to come after uh, our enemies, even though he sent the enemies against us. That don't mean that them, they, they get away scot free. See, Esau, Esau has been doing this to our people, man, for hundreds of years, man. And, and, and it seems like he just gets away with it. And, you know, he's profited off of it, benefit off of it. You know, the downfall of our people, you know, he still makes uh, profit off of it. And these other nations get in on it, too. They come over here, set up businesses wherever the Israelites are. They set up shop and make money off of us. But they hate us, you know. You know, you go into one of them Asian, Asian stores, they always watching you, walking around and want you to hurry up and buy. You hear that in the, in the movies, hurry up and buy. They like that for real, you know. They don't. They want you to spend your money, but they, they don't like you and, and they can't stand you, you know. So again, it says, the Lord shall fight for you and ye shall hold your peace. So that's what we're doing, okay. We just, like I said, we're just bringing out this word, man, teaching, all right. Because we know that the Heavenly Father is going to fight our battles. Okay. All right. This is Psalms 139 and 19. Okay. It says, surely thou will slay the wicked. Okay. Oh God, depart from me. Therefore, ye bloody men. Okay. So, you know, we know that the Heavenly Father is going to slay them. Okay. And he's going to do it by way of his son, Yahweh Shai. Okay. Who do, like, again, the world calls Jesus Christ. His son, Yahweh Shai, is going to return with the host of angels, and he's going to get busy. That's why I showed you the imagery when you see, um, and you can see, uh, you know, Yah Yahweh Shai with the blood and stuff on him, okay? Which the scriptures uh, goes into that in great detail, all right? 
which we're going to get into that. All right, but I just wanted to show you this, man, because like I said, when we post these things, there's somebody that's sitting around and don't like that, and every, they they think waking up to knowing you're an Israelite is all just peace and harmony and rainbows and unicorns and stuff. Nah, man, it's it's deeper than that. Okay, it's deeper than that. You know, like I said, when it comes to this truth, you got to take, you got to get the good, the bad, and the ugly. You gotta you gotta eat of the whole roll, man. Okay. But yes, the Heavenly Father definitely is going to, uh, he's going to get busy through his son, Yahweh Shai. All right. This is Ezekiel 35, starting at verse 5. Okay. It says, because thou has had a perpetual hatred. And this is going to Esau. Esau is the one with that perpetual hatred. And who, is he, and who does he have hatred for? His own brother, Jacob, the Israelites. Okay. All right. So again, it says, because thou has had a perpetual hatred and has shed the blood of the children of Israel by the force of the sword in the time of their calamity and the time that their iniquity had an end. OK, this devil kept it going. OK, therefore, as I live, saith the Lord God, Yahweh, OK, I will prepare thee unto blood. OK, and blood shall pursue thee. OK, this man loves blood. Look at, uh, uh, you know, he liked blood, uh, bloody meat, you know, his meat raw. He likes it. He likes it like that. You know, uh, scary movies. You watch, uh, you know, it, it, we got uh, so-called horror movies and it's just nothing but gory and blood. Hey, this man loves blood. Vampires. <laughs> you know, this man drinks blood. OK. He has a lust uh, uh, for blood, man. You know, he goes out here and just kill animals just to be killing them for sport. You know, animals ain't bothering nobody or doing nothing. And this man's out there. Uh, especially in Africa, hunting them, okay? That's that's the type of man we're, we're dealing with, man, the type of devil, okay? The Bible calls this man the cunning hunter, okay? All right, he sets traps and things like that, all right? That's who Esau is, all right? So you got to know, uh, when you wake up, and you, you're not only knowing who you are, but you also got to know your enemies. And see, we know Esau's history. OK. Like I said, Lord willing, I'll be getting into a lesson about leprosy tomorrow. I'll talk about, you know, Cain and, and what he did, because, you know, people are, are like, you know, you know, some might be in doubt that that, um, you know, he was hit with vitiligo. OK, we know that a mark was put on him and it was a type of mark that, you know, um, he was uh, seen. OK. And they're going to be like, you know, ain't never seen, um, you know, they ain't never seen nothing like that. That's why he said if, if the people see him the way he uh, looks, they will slay him. All right. What's up now? All right. But this is, uh, again, uh, verse 6. And it says, Therefore, as I live, saith the Lord God, I will prepare thee unto blood, and blood shall pursue thee. Since thou hast not hated blood, even blood shall pursue thee. Okay. So, pretty much, man. Hey, man. Your shot's going to get busy, man. And he's like, blood is going to pursue the talking about the Edomites, Esau, Edom. All right. So that's beautiful, man. OK. And so one of the things, you know, understanding that. All right. A lot of your Edomites out here are going to. Hey, well, I didn't do it. My forefathers did it, you know, but I didn't do it. I, I'm not guilty of that. I love everybody. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's the first thing they want to bring out. OK, you know, they want to be innocent and stuff. A lot of them to this day still profit and benefit off of uh, off of the slavery. OK. They still profit and benefit off of it. All right. So there's a punishment for that. OK, this is Isaiah 14 and 21. And it says prepare slaughter for his children for the iniquity of their fathers, that they do not rise nor possess the land, nor fill the face of the world with cities. This is Esau. OK, because see Esau, one of the things also uh, blessings that he got, the many blessings that was given unto him, he would have to do with heaven. OK, so this man would um, he would have all the best places on the earth. But now we're in a time where, um, you know what I'm saying? They, they're starting to the, this, the, uh, decrease, all right, in numbers, you know, because they've been scattered. 
all over the world and the best places anywhere you can man you go to some country and you thinking oh i can get away from edomites and there's edomites there out and about wherever the best places are uh, in those places esau has it all right so and that's pretty much uh you know what we're dealing with okay so again it says prepare slaughter for his children for the iniquity of their fathers that they do not rise nor possess the land nor fill the face of the world with cities okay so you know at the end of the day you are your forefathers and i'm talking to you edomites you know and you got to pay all right you're gonna you're going to uh gonna have to uh, meet your baker which is yahweh shy all right and you're gonna be judged you know for the iniquities of your forefathers okay because ultimately you are your forefathers through the regeneration okay this is psalms 137 and 7 it says remember O lord the children of edom see there we go going into edom esau esau's name was changed to edom which edom means red okay and when you say edomites that's basically you're the same red people okay so it says remember O lord the children of edom in the day of jerusalem who said raise it raise it even to the foundation thereof all right okay all right and then verse 8 it says oh daughter of babylon see babylon this place is babylon the great okay all right who are who art to be destroyed happy shall thou be that rewardeth thee as thou hast served us okay verse 9 it says happy shall he be that taketh and dasheth thy little ones against the stones okay so like they they was doing this to our own our children okay our children was done like this you know they and this is this is written history okay like the conquistadors when they was uh out and about out here doing what they were doing you know if it was a crying baby and stuff like that they just take the baby man and, and 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 dash the baby against the stones you know they was killing uh killing our children and feeding them to their dogs all right Sometimes they would test their swords and it was slicing open the, the native woman's stomach. All right. Pulling, pulling the baby, the, the baby man that wasn't even born yet in her stomach and pulling out and, and, and slamming that, the, the child against the stones. They were doing these things. So these things are going to come upon them. OK, it says happy shall he be. OK, and you got to think some Israelites might not have a stomach for this, you know. And then you got some that are going to be built up because when you understand these Edomites and the mindset that they really have, they really have a, a hatred for you, man. They really do. Even if you work around them, they smile in your face. They really cannot stand you. OK, I've gave testimonies of people I work with and they've they've said some stuff. They said they said some some heavy things. I had one. There was one guy on my job. He was a supervisor and he bragged about. Uh, remembering going to a, he said I remember going to picnics and you and if you don't know what that's talking about that's talking about what I showed you earlier the lynchings you know that was another way you know they didn't always say the word oh we're going to a lynching they said we're going to a picnic okay when they say when you even go into the word uh picnic anyway it was basically like saying we're going out to pick a nigga you know pick a nigga you know picnic okay that's what that that's what that was you know they would they have church service and then right after that they'll go out there and have a so-called picnic lynching uh lynching our people man okay so again it says happy shall he be that taketh and dash of thy little ones against the stones because you know when you look at some of those images you had little children that were sitting there smiling posing next to a uh you know a dead israelite so-called negro hispanic or native american and they were smiling happy all right so all that old peace and talk and can we all just get along spirit hey man <laughs> the heavenly father's not dealing with that okay now we got to be at peace with all men we're not we're not like i said we're not inciting violence because when you do that you're putting a stain on the ministry okay and we're just giving them a reason to come up against us which they're going to do it anyways but we don't want to add no extra okay what we need to be doing is teaching our people to come back to the heavenly father all right bid them back to the marriage that's that's what we need to be doing you know all that other stuff you know now nah, that's you know vanity okay 
But as far as peace goes, as far as like us being at peace with these other nations, nah. <laughs> All right. This is Matthew 10 and 34. And it says, think not that I had come to send peace on earth. And this is Yahweh Shai, okay, who the world calls Jesus Christ. Okay. He's not bringing peace. Okay. He says, I came not to send peace, but a sword. When you think of a sword, which a sword, really the word, it goes into weaponry. Okay. He's saying he's coming with weapons. He's coming. He's coming with pretty much war. You know, a sword. He's he's coming with war. Okay, and his and he's like his father. Okay, the Most High, Yahweh, the Creator. Okay, the Most High, the Ancient of Days. Okay, he is a man of war. That's what the scriptures it tells you that he's a man of war. All right, but that's in the Book of Exodus. All right, so he's coming with a sword. All right. This is Ezekiel 25 and 14 says, and I will lay my vengeance upon Edom by the hand of my people. OK, because, you know, the scripture says vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. But, you know, and people will see that will use that scripture. But also it tells you this right here. And I will lay my vengeance upon Edom. See, so he's talking about Edom again. OK, by the hand of my people, Israel, because, you know, our people, you know, and that could be uh, he can be using the two thirds to do it. OK, and ultimately he's going to use. Um. Uh, He's going to use some of us of the, of the elect. All right. You know, when if Jake got them powers, hey, because the Bible tells you that uh, it goes into how we're going to be battle axes. OK, he said, you are my battle axes. You are my weapons of war. That's the elect. OK, they're going to have spiritual power. OK, he says, with, with you, I will, I'm going to tear down kingdoms. OK, and all these kingdoms of the world, these uh, nations. OK, they're not serving the heavenly father. So they're going to be broken down. They got to be they got to be brought down to nothing. OK, so that they can be in a place of uh, being humble. They got to be humbled. OK, and they're going to learn the ways of the Heavenly Father. Because, see, we're going to be a light to the world. We're going to teach them. OK, but you're going to have some that are going to buck up and, and, and try to resist. OK, and hey, the Heavenly Father is nothing to play with. OK, it's not all like I said, it's not all rainbow and unicorns. OK. So again, it says, and I will lay my vengeance upon Edom by the hand of my people Israel, and they shall do in Edom according to my anger. See that? I told you. <laughs> it's not all unicorns and, and rainbows and stuff, all right? And according to my fury, and they shall know my vengeance. See, there's, <laughs> this is vengeance, man. Saith the Lord God. This is Yahweh the Most High speaking. Woo! Man. All right? And like I said, his son is going to get busy. This is Isaiah. All right, uh, 63, and I'll start at verse 1. I'll read a little bit of this. Okay, it says, Who is this that cometh from Edom? Okay, this is Yahweh Shai. In Edom, like I said, that's the land where the Edomites are from. Okay, Mount Seir. All right, the Bible tells you to prophesy against it. Okay, wherever Esau is. All right, who is this that cometh from Edom with dyed garments from Basra? Okay, them dyed garments that's going into blood. There's going to be blood on his clothes. All right. This uh, this that is glorious in his apparel, okay, traveling in the greatness of his strength, okay, like in pictures I was showing you, okay, I that speak in righteous, righteousness, mighty to save, okay, wherefore art thou red in thy apparel, see that yes, yeah, that blood, and thy garments like him that treadeth in the wine fat, okay, I have tried in the wine press alone, all right, and of the people there was none with me, okay, for I would tread them in my anger and trample them in my fury. And their blood shall be sprinkled upon my garment. See that? <laughs> like the pictures. That's, and I will and I will stain all my raiment. OK, for the day of vengeance is in my heart and the year of my redeemed is come. His redeemed. That's his his elect. OK, they're going to be re redeemed. OK, redeem redemption. Another word for that is redemption. OK, we're, we're going to be in the time of our redemption. OK. That's why we're doing this work, man. Lord willing, we be the ones that be redeemed, okay? Delivered, first fruits of the kingdom, you know? So many benefits come with that, man, okay? Shoot, we don't want to go through that lake of fire, man, okay? When you go into that, and that's another lesson, they're going, you know, just going into that, okay? This is another precept just showing you that, you know, he's going to, his clothes will be dipped in blood, all right? This is Revelations 19 and 13, okay? And it says, and he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, okay? And his name is called the Word of God because Yahweh Shai is the Word. He is the living Word, all right? The Word of God, okay? 
And that's what and we speak as the oracles of God. OK, we speak the scriptures. We don't speak our own mind, what we think, how we feel. That's why I, I always tell people on my page, hey, man, I don't come with them thoughts and opinions. OK, even some that might know a little scripture and still try to come with like a debate type spirit. We're not into all that, man. We're just trying to simply edify and teach our people. If you don't agree, then you need to keep it moving, you know. We're not we we're not here to win arguments and start arguments and debates and things like that. No, we're out here trying to edify our people, man. All right, and bid them back to the marriage, make our calling election sure. You know, it's a serious business. Okay, it's nothing to play with. Okay, but yeah, you got this precept here that goes into that. All right, this is Revelations 18 and verse 20, and it says, "Rejoice over her, thou heaven, and ye holy apostles and prophets." For God hath avenged you on her. Okay? You see that? See, it's all about that, you know, we're going to get that that vengeance. All right? And the Heavenly Father, we're going to get it through the Heavenly Father and through His Son and through the Holy Angels. And then, like I said, some of us, Lord willing, you know, may partake in that. Okay? But that's only when that time comes, you know, and you'll we'll know. All right? But we're not out here, you know, like some type of militia group and all that stuff, bearing arms. Hey, we don't do all that, man. We ain't into all that. Like I said, we got Bibles in our hand. We're teaching the word. Okay. That's what it's all about. But yeah, we're going to be in that spirit of rejoicing. Okay. All right. And just to prove that more. All right. This is Psalms 58 and 10. And I'll end it on this one. Okay, and Lord willing, it's been edifying. Lord willing, you know, you got some understanding. All right. That's why I said bringing out these scriptures and just showing you, hey, man, not only like what Esau has done, but also, you know, uh, you know, because this man is the bloody man. Okay. But also that we're going to get busy. Okay. You know, starting with Yahweh Shai. Okay. The holy angels. All right. You know, and, and, and he's going to use uh, some of the elect. All right. All right. The elect men. Okay, battle axes. Okay, to get busy. All right, and that blood's gonna be shed. Okay, our enemies. Okay, but this is Psalms 58 and 10, and it says, "The righteous shall rejoice when he seeth the vengeance." Okay, he shall wash his feet in the blood of the wicked. All right, so there you have it. All right, we're gonna be in that spirit of rejoicing, and a lot of us are kind of in that spirit now because we. We want to see this place fall, man. We pray every day, man. We want to see this place fall. And Lord willing, we be here to see it. Okay? This is what our ancestors prayed for, the fall of this place. When they was in that hard bondage and captivity under these under these devils. Okay? They was praying, man, to see this place fall, man. Okay? And we're in that time now. All right? So, Lord willing, you found this lesson here edifying. I want to give all honor, all glory, and all praise unto Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Rakakwadash. Double honors to the elders of the nation of Israel. And Shalom to you, brothers and sisters out there. Until the next one, Shalom.